This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And in this week's episode, he's taking another look at the World War II inspired weaponry of Battlefield V. And I had some interesting little details to show him. A detail that you very rarely see is the barrel change mechanism. The default MG42 comes with a 50 round belt, so it didn't have enough rounds to overheat. But when you progress the weapon, you get a 250 round belt. Suddenly you have ah. to worry about the weapon overheating. That's really interesting. So yeah, I, I was in the same boat and I obviously didn't level it up. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our new season of Loadout, a show where we take a look at the history and impact of some of the most iconic weapons in gaming. We've got several episodes up on our YouTube channel, with our most recent being a deep dive into the iconic Tommy gun, as well as a chat with Jonathan all about the MP5. So make sure to check them out. Right, over to the guns of Battlefield 5. Blast from the past here, but I don't remember a painted skin for the Arasaka. What is going on with that bolt? It almost looks like it's leaving itself behind when it cocks. Oh my oh, god. Oh yeah, the bolt is cycling through the... Clipping through the chrysanthemum, yeah, absolutely. That is incredibly lazy, sorry. So this, this flower, the chrysanthemum, the Japanese imperial symbol, this was found on the breach or the, the receiver ring of these rifles the they were chiseled off they were defaced this is this has one on the back of the cocking piece so it shouldn't look like that not to say that firearms aren't decorated to that extent historically but this was not they wouldn't be wasting time engraving a floor design into their cocking piece so that that is a piece of fantasy that goes along with the white paint on the buttstock then we have the the bolt itself clipping through that cocking piece so the cocking piece is moving backwards to some extent by the look of it and then the bolt is carrying on through it so there's been a mistake in the animation this is one of a number of battlefield one and battlefield five uh, guns they existed but they were never really used it's an impressive design that did exist and did make it into military issue, but it was not used in the Second World War, which really ought to be the benchmark for your Second World War game, but uh, I do understand why we want some variety. I would rather not have this stuff in there unless you, you've got some special setting where it makes sense. But the variety is good. Quite a distinctive report as well. I mean, I don't think anyone's recorded firing one, so I'm interested as to how they made the sound effects for this. The, the breeder is covered over on Forgotten Weapons, by the way, so do do check that out. I believe they worked with Forgotten Weapons for this and for Battlefield 1, which explains its presence. So this, this was actually used. It's distinctive. It's very cool with the, the grenade launcher on the right-hand side. So the, the Modelo 28 grenade launcher without a, a firing mechanism or without the bolt, I should say. The firing mechanism is, is connected to the trigger of the rifle, but you only get one bolt. So just as we see in the game there, or nearly as we see in the game. So let me just demonstrate. So I fired my, my grenade. We have our trigger linkage there connecting the rifle's trigger. So you can see the sear for the rifle bolt dropping when I pull the trigger, but it's also dropping the sear in the grenade launcher at the same time. But if I replicate the animation, open the bolt, pull it back, and just rip it out the gun, I can't do that. If you had a bolt that you could pull straight out of the gun, well, suddenly your gun doesn't work. So there has to be a way of removing the bolt. Most rifles have a lever or a latch or a, a position for a cocking piece or a safety to be able to withdraw the bolt. So to actually achieve this, um, as we see in the game, you need to lift up the cocking handle, which cocks the cocking piece, as you can, some of you will know. Pull it to the stop there. You then have to reach below and press the trigger linkage with your thumb to then remove the bolt to swap it back into the rifle, change hands again, and use it as a, as a, as a rifle or carbine, I should say. So the animation is incorrect, but I can sort of see I don't know. I think I think there would have been room there for a, 
a more lengthy, difficult reload animation to switch from grenade launcher back to rifle. But I can see why they did this, because if you're, you know, you're much more likely to get shot by somebody if your animation is still playing out doing what I just did. Other than that, I think this is a good effort. Add something a bit different, of course, because it's not typical in this era to have a, a grenade launcher. I was going to say over and under, but it isn't over and under. It's side by side on this one. Now, interestingly, we do see a player chance the weapon over to look over the top of it to shoot the grenade launcher. The other issue with this, we don't want to be tilting it onto its side like we see in the game. It means we can't shoulder it. The recoil of this is going to be significant. So you want the butt plate in the shoulder. You absolutely don't want to be doing this with it. That's going to hurt and be awkward. And you have no way to aim. What you want to do is use the actual sight that's built into the, the rear sight of the carbine. Push the button and the whole thing moves. And you just, instead of using the notch for the rifle carbine, use the notch for the grenade launcher. And that's your front sight there, that stud on the side of the gun. And that gives you a pretty elevated trajectory for your grenade to go arcing in. So I don't know why they didn't model the sights as they're supposed to be modeled, but the actual model of the gun is good. I think this is up there as, a, as one of the, the better attempts at the Thompson. I agree. As we see in another version of it, I think they wanted a drum magazine because of the extra gameplay and option that gives you. But it's nice to see them use a 1928 to make it realistic that it can have a drum magazine rather than an M1 or an M1A1. And, anachronistically shove one in there. Uh, it also looks, that big, that big slab-sided design looks great. And I, th I think it has enough sort of weight to it. Uh, he's maybe handling it a bit too, like it's a bit too light. Uh, the rate of fire is a bit low. You're looking at 900 rounds per minute for the, for the 1928. So I think this is a bit low. Thinking about it further, I don't know if this is accidental as well, but because when the game launched, it was like Axis versus British, I believe. So does the the, tw the 1928 Thompson make more sense as well? Because that was lend-leased to Britain? It does, yeah. Well, and purchased. There was an initial purchase and then a load of lend-lease on after it. But yeah, they were all 1928s, so it, it does make sense. In fact, uh, including some had the foregrip, but a lot had just the straight forehand. So I think they've deliberately chosen a British variant, as it were. The reload is really good as well. So we see when the gun runs dry, you have to cock the thing first, and then and what they do, which I've never thought of, but I'm sure you would do in an emergency, is you slap the drum out the other side. Again, if you've ever tried to reload a Thompson drum, you can in fact over insert it and push it too far. So you can take advantage of that in theory. You never do it in reality because Thompson drum mags are very expensive and quite fragile. But yeah, in this situation, shoving it out the other side and slapping it another one is actually a very cool way to to get a speed reload going. Broadly, uh, that deserves to be in our sort of top three video game Thompsons, I think. My praise indeed. Just something I noticed as the player uh, is inspecting the Delisle carbine, which is what this is. The cocking piece. So this, the back half of this gun is a, a short magazine Lee Enfield rifle. Front half is an integrally silenced 45 caliber carbine. The cocking piece is sticking out almost twice as far as it ought to, which is weird. Of course, the sights that are on the one I'm looking at are completely wrong. There's a weird ring at the front that is A, not a front sight. It's more of a rear sight. And B, it's going to get bent very easily. And then we have some weird kind of target semi Galilean optic type looking thing that I don't understand and shouldn't be there. Weirdly, they've got the ordinary Delisle ladder rear sight or tangent, sorry, rear sight on there. So Dave is messing me, with me here, I think, by modifying this. Maybe this is the default configuration. I, I don't remember slash no. And there are a few issues with the model as well. Doesn't quite look as it ought to. Notably, the magazine housing on the proper Delisle. Magazine housing is a total housing, comes all the way down to the floor plate of the modified Colt 45 1911 Mac. This one is a partial one that stops at the curve of the trigger guard. I've seen that style of trigger guard on reproduction denials, or, or well, not reproductions, knockoffs as it were, that, that, that don't 
follow the original design correctly. So maybe that's the mistake there. The broad lines are there, but uh, in detail, it's not amazing. Okay, I see how these weird sights are supposed to work. There's a sort of etched on red crosshair on the front sight, and then you line that up with the rear, I think. Doesn't really make any sense. The report of the Delisle though is pretty good. The Delisle and the well rod are incredibly quiet. You know, we can't make suppressed firearms any quieter than they already were. Very hard to say whether that sound effect is, is truly accurate because it's extremely subjective. Interestingly, it is louder when you're indoors. Good. Good. It's a bit quieter when you're just out in the open. The the object of a, of a silencer is not to fully silence the firearm. This is why the term suppressor has become standard. It's to make it either not sound like a firearm or not not make you not realise it's a firearm until it's too late. So really nice to see the Delisle in a video game. Um, I wish they'd gone the extra mile and made it a bit more correct. Right, so this looks like the M30 Luftwaffe take on the drilling, uh, which was a, a German sporting gun, incorporating two shotgun barrels and a rifle barrel so that you could engage different types of game. And the Luftwaffe adopted a version of it as a survival rifle, potentially for self-defense combat, as we see here, primarily for hunting to stay alive. They, they have a, a very niche use, but a single rifle barrel next to two shotgun barrels had, it, had its use with the drilling. Drilling as in ein zwei dry, by the way, if you didn't already know that. You might expect a survival rifle to be a 2-2, not rifle round or something, something very small, easy to obtain if you have the opportunity to obtain more ammo, unlikely I suppose, and small and light. But this thing is a 9.3 millimeter bullet, quite long as well, in a 74 millimeter case. It's it's a game cartridge, it's, it's a, a medium game, a deer, that kind of thing. So all three barrels on this thing could easily kill a human. Okay, so the Lati Saloranta M26, or as it's marked on the gun, because we do have one, which I'm very pleased about. I've never looked at it. This is the first time I've ever picked this gun up. Really quite a quirky looking beast. I suppose the, the barrel shroud is somewhat conventional, but the receiver is a relatively deep, unusual shape. Pretty, pretty accurately depicted in the game, except for that overall engraving that I've seen on some of the guns here. I will have to have a proper look at this in my own time, but uh, I'm very pleased to be able to briefly show you this, having seen it uh, in the game. It's a fairly typical 1920s bit of construction, solid machine steel, blued, quite nice pieces of walnut on there, though the pistol grip looks quite quite crude. The fact that it has a pistol grip, well, relatively modern for, for, for the era. The one in the game has has got, uh, as well as weird engraving on it, anti-aircraft style sights, or well, more like aircraft gun style sights. Um, I don't know if these were fitted to aircraft, actually. Those very tall sort of spider sights are really not great for infantry use. Apart from anything else, we have some major height over bore issues with sights that are tall. So the sights on the real gun are relatively compact and close to the line of the bore of the, of the barrel. You ideally don't want your sights to be way over the bore because you then have to worry about how they're going to converge at a different given distance. And if you're behind cover, like we saw with those sandbags, you can be looking at your sights, shooting at the enemy, and all the bullets are pumping into the sandbag because your barrel is down here. So we see the magazine system being utilized there. It's a sort of AK-esque paddle well before the AK, of course, but it does not rock in, it inserts, which we do see, to be fair, in the game. They haven't fallen for the trap of modeling it like an AK or an FAR man. So the rifle we're seeing here, well, we've seen both actually. We've seen the number four and we've seen, I'm now seeing the number four T, sniper variant. We do have both. I just happened to have grabbed the, the standard British rifle number four, which feels wonderfully light after hoiking that uh, light machine gun around. A much loved service rifle. And the thing we have to remember with the uh, Second World War, the British experience, as well, Commonwealth experience even more so, is that the SMLE carried on 
all the way through the Second World War, even with British frontline troops in the Middle East and, and North African theatres. So just because this new, improved, easier and cheaper to make, more robust, more accurate number four rifle existed, didn't mean that the SMLE was obsolete. Always nice to see the, the, the British service weapons represented in a game and nothing that I could see that was massively wrong there. I don't. I did play Battlefield 5. I think they did a good job with the number four. The detail that you very rarely see is the barrel change mechanism on the MG42 in games. Yeah, that is really neat to see. And I do not remember that playing the game. I don't know if that was added later or if I just didn't use the gun enough. Well, I never noticed it because the default MG42 comes with a 50 round belt. So it didn't have enough rounds to overheat. By the time you reloaded, oh. it cooled down. But when you progress the weapon, you get a 250 round belt. Suddenly you have oh. to worry about the weapon overheating. That's really interesting. So yeah, I, I was in the same boat and I obviously didn't level it up. That's incredibly cool. If you slow it down, you can just see them using a an empty case to grasp onto the to the barrel, slide it out, and then chuck a fresh one in. So he's sticking it in the side. Yeah, I'm not sure that would work without going away and trying it. Very, very hard to carry a great big heavy steel barrel off a very small item like that without your hand riding up it or, or it inserting too far, burning your hand anyway. But they at least it's a nod to the fact that this thing would be far too hot to change. Whether it would also be cherry red like that, no, I don't think so. I think if it's already if it's already that red hot, you've already changed the molecular structure of the metal too much. But it does look very cool. They've got the mechanism correct, I think. It's just I don't think you could hoik it out with an empty 792 case. And of course, a bipod being absolutely necessary with this thing. Or well, the, 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 what the game calls medium machine guns. You can't even aim down sights without mounting them. They're the ones that you just sort of have to hold close to chest height. Yeah, which is, I think, correct. Of course, we have that problem of the bipod just kind of floats over the surface. It doesn't actually physically engage with the world as an invisible anchor that anchors the gun on its invisible second bipod, which gives it a slightly ethereal, vague feel. Being able to use the bipod in a first-person shooter is relatively rare anyway, so I'm not going to give them too much stick. Okay, well, I have to admit, I had never heard of the Lambu Type 1. The name is different in the game, but I believe it was called the Type 1. A prototype allegedly trialed by the Japanese Imperial Army. I've never seen this before in my life. It's nice to be surprised when you have amassed a reasonable amount of knowledge about firearms. There's still stuff out there that I haven't even seen. What's really intriguing to me about this is that it's supposedly introduced, oh, well, not introduced, sorry, supposedly developed by the mid 30s, but it has the magazine and the pistol grip arrangement of the SA 23, the Uzi, the British uh, MCEMs. The whole, well, part of the barrel reciprocates as well. You see the, the front end of the weapon moving toward the shooter as you shoot it. Very, very weird thing. No, I see. That's that's very strange, actually, thinking about it. I need to I need to research this thing and try to try to get to the bottom of it. The receiver is long enough that the we may not be looking at the telescope bolt on something like the SA-23 or the Uzi here, where you have bolt mass in front of the breech face to make the whole gun shorter but keep enough mass to actually operate. This looks like it's got a huge great big bolt that goes back and forth leaving the breech barrel in the front as normal and so the only thing unusual about it is that the magazine is in the pistol grip rather than the pistol grip being back here. But I've learned something. Right, the, the PZB-39, the Panzerbusche 1939, as the, the number would imply. Here is one. I won't be able to hold it up for you for very long. Very fragile, deteriorated butt pad on this one, sadly, but otherwise in very good condition. It has that long, grooved forend on it. A super heavy, back, tapered barrel, muzzle brake on the end, all important tripod, carry handle. So, as long as I'm careful to not damage the butt plate, I can show you that, yes, the game has got it right. You simply push down on the pistol grip, which rotates slightly to unlock, and it drops the whole trigger mechanism out of the gun and drops the breech block down for loading. 
Now this isn't fitted with its cartridge holder. We do have them. Um, I left it off this one. And you need that sort of hopper to have the rounds convenient, convenient to hand because this is a single loader. This is almost like a, a giant Martini Henry. Sights are almost correct. The, the aperture is a bit, is too large. So this looks like a, you know, 50 cal or something of that order. Well, what it actually is, is a 792 bullet in a giant nectar down case. So they're what they're trying to do here is use case capacity to drive very high velocity and then a steel cord ordinary rifle bullet set into the front. But with armor penetration, you want high velocity and, and high sectional density. So um, a smaller projectile driven very, very fast is, is one way to penetrate armor. So it might hopefully, hopefully go through some tank armor, but it's going to create a, a small hole. But then, you know, even a large caliber armor piercing round, only the steel penetrator or tungsten penetrator is going to go through. Admittedly, it's a larger thing. It's going to do more damage on the inside side but you might still with this get spalling off the inside of the uh, steel plate that adds to the wounding of the crew and you hopefully can fire more shots and maybe hit something vital it, it's not a, a, a solution that's pursued very often by any means this tiny bullet isn't very good for anti-materiel purposes so you've specialized to try and make sure you can penetrate tank armor but you've made it basically unusable as a large caliber anti-infantry or anti-materiel rifle. So that's why we don't see the PZB concept really taken forward uh, late war or after the war. Okay guys, thank you for watching the more guns, I think, <laughs> from Battlefield 5. Nice to return to a bit of a classic like that. Please do check out the work that we do here at the Royal Armouries. You can see our website, our social media channels. We have a new exhibition opening imminently called Reloaded, which is about the uh, some of the decorated firearms that we have, uh, including things like a diamond revolver or diamond encrusted gold encrusted revolver and a golden Kalashnikov and our favorite, a little uh, Art Deco baby Browning pistol. Um, so that's well worth a look if you can. Uh, but otherwise you can check us out every week on the Royal Armouries channel and you can see me back here on GameSpot next week.